everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for joining me for Midweek Motivation. I hope you are having an awesome, awesome week. Happy Wednesday to everyone. Can you believe that we are already halfway through August? Time is really flying, but it flies when you're having fun. Isn't that the truth? Thank you everyone for joining me today. If you think that you found me by happenstance, it is not true because I have something to share with you today. And the Lord has placed you here in my scope. If you're watching this on Periscope, hey, hey, name Maxwell45, name Max45, how are you? Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're watching this on Periscope, if it's on YouTube, on Twitter, or it's on Facebook, thank you so much for joining me here today. We're going to give a few minutes for everyone to settle and get comfortable in the room. If you have not shared this out yet, be sure to share this out with your friends, with your tribe, with your followers, with your community, whatever you call the group of people that are in your circle. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Dr. Angela Chester. I'm a pastoral counselor and Christian life coach. I have offices both in downtown Long Beach as well as in Hampton, Virginia. I'm a best-selling author, a wife, a mom, a cancer survivor. I am so many things. And today I am coming to you in the capacity of teacher and minister. So thank you so much for joining me. So let's go on and get started. Our scriptures for today, and yes, I do, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, simply look down in the description box and they are all listed there. So our scriptures for today are Romans 15, 8. That's Romans 15, 8. Then we're going to turn over and look at Luke 18, 4 through 5. Luke 18, 4 through 5. And we're going to look at John 14 27 John 14 27 our general scripture of the day is Deuteronomy 11 13 through 15 Deuteronomy 11 13 through 15 so let's go on and get started please turn your Bibles to Romans 15 18 and that is in the New Testament so you're going to go towards the end of your Bible and Romans is one of those latter books, so you're going to turn pretty far into the New Testament. So I'm going to read it to you in both the NIV as well as in the New Living Translation. So it reads, For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me through me. Now let's read that in the New Living Translation. And it reads, I dare not boast of anything else. I have brought the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I lived before them. I dare not boast of anything. I have brought the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I lived before them. Hola. So when we look at what he's saying in this, he's not going to boast about the fact that he lived in a certain place. He's not going to boast about the type of uh, clothing that he wore. He's not going to boast about the friends that he has. He boasts only in the fact that he has lived the life according to God's directives and that he has brought the Gentiles to God, that he has been a disciple as the Lord has given him the directive. So what does that mean by today's standards? He's not talking about where he works. Nobody cares where you work. No one cares who you're married to. No one cares if you live high on the hill in a big old fancy house. What matters is how are you living your life for Christ? So he even gives the example, and I love it in the New Living Translation because it says, by the way I lived before them. Now we are supposed to be Christians. We are supposed to be living as Christ has lived. Do people see Christ in you? If there is something that you need to work on, it's okay. You can always push the reset button, brothers and sisters. Push the reset button. Take a moment and say, Lord, I'm tripping. I need your help. I need you 
to come and give me what? A fresh anointing. And that is exactly what we're talking about today. Receiving a fresh anointing. Having the opportunity and the ability to be forgiven, to reset, and to walk back on the path in which the Lord has placed us. So by living rightly before them, sometimes you are the only example of what it means to be a Christian. People talk a good talk, but are they walking that walk? So make sure that especially if you are working in ministry, if you are a kingdom builder, that when people look at you, they see the light of Christ shining before you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go on and look at Luke 18. So you're now going to go to the left side of your Bible and flip back. We're going to go to Luke 18, verses 4 through 5. Luke 18, 4 and 5. Now for those of you who don't have the headings, this is entitled Story of the Persistent widow. Luke 18, 4 through 5, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. The judge ignored her for a while, but eventually she wore him out. I fear neither God nor man, the judge says to himself, but this woman is driving me crazy. Yes, that is in scripture. This woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. Let me read it one more time. The judge ignored her for a while, but eventually she wore him out. I fear neither God nor man, he said to himself, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant requests. So let's give a little bit of history so that we understand what's going on here. Now we have to remember the culture of the time. Women have no voice. Women cannot go before a judge just all by themselves. Usually it is your husband or your son. The importance of that male figure in your life. Your husband or your son would go before the judge and would plead your case for you and it would work accordingly. Whatever happens between the judge and the male person in your life, thus it was decreed. As a widowed woman, and there's no mention of a son, which means she has no male figure, she has no male to go before the judge on her behalf. So what is she doing? She is going every day and she's knocking on that door. She is going every day and she is saying, judge, 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 I need you. I need you to do this for me. I don't have a male figure. Judge, 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 I need you to give me justice. How many times have we gone before someone and said, I need you to do this. I need you to do this. And it seems like we're at our wit's end, right? We seem like there is no way. But what happens? Catch this. The judge thinks that it's his own doing. Ha <laughs> ha. He thinks that it's his own doing. This woman is getting on my nerves. This woman is driving me crazy. Because he says, I fear neither God nor man. So he is all within himself. That is 1,000% ego, brothers and sisters. So he says, I fear God nor man. And this woman is, this woman, okay, right? This woman is driving me crazy. So I'm going to see that she gets justice. So he gives her exactly what she has petitioning, been petitioning for. She, he gives her exactly what she has been going before the Lord for. So the prayers of the righteous are always answered. It doesn't matter if you have someone that, that can go before you. Women, it doesn't matter if you have that husband or that son. You are able to go before the Lord and petition for what you need. God is able to work through you and for you regardless of who you are, regardless of what stage of your life that you are in. And we assume that this woman is an elderly woman because she's a widow. We assume that. But we also know that you can be a widow and be 
of, of, of a young age. You could be 30s or in your 40s or even in your 50s and still be a widow. So it does not matter. And if you notice, they don't put that restriction. They don't put that restriction in there. It doesn't mean that you have to be one thing or the other. This is for all women who have been widowed. This is for all women that have been left without someone to speak up for, to speak up for them. We must and sometimes be our own advocate. Amen. Sometimes we must fall before the Lord and simply believe that our prayers have been answered regardless of what is shown before us. We must walk by faith and not walk by sight. Because let me tell you, things don't always look good, do they? Sometimes we are walking through the darkness. Sometimes we are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And we don't know what is on the other side. But when we trust and believe that our God will come through in each and every circumstance, then we will persistently knock on the door and expect for justice to happen. We will expect for justice to prevail. We will not grow weary. We will continue to knock upon the door. Amen? Amen. So I want you now to turn to, and you might be saying, well, well, Pastor, what does this, what does this have to do with, with a fresh anointing? Sometimes we have to anoint ourselves, right? So that, and everybody knows that song. Sometimes you just have to, you just have to go and pray for yourself. Sometimes you just have to go and just believe all by yourself. We don't always have someone that we can touch and agree with. But if we believe within ourselves that God has answered our prayer, then it will be answered. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? I just, I'm believing if I just simply touch him, it will happen. Remember the centennial, remember the Roman soldier that said, no, Jesus, you ain't got to go to my house. If you just send the word, then I believe that it will be done. All you must do is believe that God has answered your prayer and it will be answered. Now, I want you to turn and we're going to do a little bit of flip, flip, flipping around a little bit here. So we are ultimately going to look at John. But I want to read kind of some foretext so that you'll understand what I'm talking about when I get to the main text. So I want you to look at Luke chapter 2. So we're already in Luke 18. I want you to just turn back a few pages and go to Luke chapter 2 verse 14. Thank you so much for my hearts. I do appreciate them. Luke 2 14. And I promise you I'm going to make this make sense to you. It reads, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all whom God favors. Again, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to all whom God favors. I want you now to turn to John. You're going to go towards the right in your Bible, towards the back. We're going to go to John chapter 20. I'm a very big believer of if you can read it for yourself, to read it with your own eyes so that you can follow along. And the Lord places a, a certain understanding upon each one of our hearts and our minds every time we are exposed to his scripture. So you may want to go back and listen to this at a, at a later time. And it may have a new and fresh anointing for you at a different day. So we're looking at John chapter 20 verse 26. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. He said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now I want you to turn to our scripture that's going to help tie this all together. And we're looking at John. Chapter 14, verse 27. John 14, verse 27. And I'm reading in the New Living Translation. You can choose whatever translation is best for you. I know some people like King James, some people like the NIV, whatever works best for you. John 14, 27 reads, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give 
isn't like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled and afraid. Don't be troubled or afraid. I'm going to also read that in the King James Version, because I know many people are going, mm, that sounds about right, but, mm-hmm. So here we go. King James Version. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. So what's really important and how do we tie all of that in together? Now I'm going to use the words as in the New Living Translation. Because it's very specific and I want you to be able to dot those lines. I am leaving you with a gift. It starts off with what a gift. And what is a gift? A gift is something that is given, not taken. A gift is something that is freely given to the recipient with love, with honor, with respect, yes, gift of peace. He goes on and says, peace of mind and of heart. Peace of mind and of heart. Don't be anxious. Don't be worried. Don't be concerned. Don't pull your hair out over it. Don't get mad and yell at your kids about it. Don't stick your lips out or stomp your feet or slam the doors about it. I am giving you peace of mind and peace of heart. So it does not matter how you are looking at your situation. Whatever is going on in your world, people will say, oh, don't run it through your heart, run it through your mind. Don't run it through your mind, run it through your heart. It matters not. I am giving you peace over the logic. I am giving you peace over the emotion. I am giving you peace what kind of peace? Come on, Jesus, and qualify it for me. And the peace I give you isn't like the peace of the world. I give you my peace. Jesus is giving you his peace. He is giving you the peace of the Father, which surpasses all of the peace that we have. So then what does he go on and say? If it's important, he says it again. So don't be troubled or afraid. Don't be troubled or afraid. So what happens? Sometimes your mind will make you troubled and your heart will make you afraid. So you don't have to worry about the coming or the going. You don't have to worry about the north or the south. You don't have to worry about the east or the west because I've got you covered, says Jesus. I am giving you my peace. Yes. Remember, if it goes on, right? Remember when I told you I was going away, but I will come back for you again? It's because I love you. And you will be very happy for me because now I go to the Father who is greater in me than I am. Come on! So that lets you know that Jesus is giving you his peace, but God the Father is even more than that! So what are you... Excuse me for just going and saying it in black and white. What are you tripping about? God has given us this peace. So we need to stop worrying. We need to stop saying, oh, Lord, what's going to happen? And stand sure. Stand on that ground and say, Lord, I thank you for my peace. Lord, I thank you for my understanding. Lord, I thank you for making a way out of no way. And I thank you for the gift that you have given to me. Now, see... When we understand the true essence of what it is to have a gift, gifts are not stolen. Gifts are given freely. Gifts are not robbery. Gifts are given in the token of appreciation and respect. So it's not something that somebody stole from Jesus. It's not the devil came and like took it. No, he says, I'm going to give it to you so that it cannot be taken from you. I give my life freely. 
so that you may have life everlasting. I give you my peace freely so that you may have peace that passes all understanding. I give it to you so that it cannot be taken from you. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had some moments in my life where you were just like, Lord, I'm going to need you to deal with this because this is more than what I can deal with in my own understanding. I am coming before you and I am knocking on your door and asking for you to give me that peace. If you've ever had someone pass away, if you've ever fallen under a severe illness, you had to walk in your faith. You had to walk in that understanding that God was going to make it okay some kind of way, somehow. And that you are going to come out brighter and shiner on the other side. So you may be saying, well, Pastor, you, said, you know, Dr. Angela, you still ain't tied this all together. Well, here, let me show you. In the beginning of the, of the scripture that I gave you was Luke 2.14, right? That was the announcement of the birth of Jesus. And what did the announcement say? Peace. Jesus is bringing us what? Peace. Where? On earth. Because heaven's already in peace. Heaven is already, you know, having a great time. It's here on earth that we're dealing with right now. Well, you may say, well, you gave me John 20, 26, but that was, he was talking to Thomas. Well, the scripture that we're dealing with right now is the middle. John 14, 27 is the middle. I am leaving you, but I am giving you my peace. I want to remind you that I have to go. I was telling you all along that I have I am coming to fulfill the law. Don't forget that means that I got to go. But when I leave, I'm going to give you this gift of my peace. And God always gives it to us in threes. So we have the before he comes, we have the while he's here. And he gives us John 20:26. 20, is once he's gone. That is the resurrection. I got to leave you, Thomas. You see these holes? I'm about to leave. You see these holes in my hand? I'm about to leave. But what do I give you? And how do I greet you? Peace be with you. God gives us certain things over and over and over again because he understands that we as human beings need these things, that we crave these things, that we know just innately that we are supposed to have these things. But due to sin, we have been pulled away from the creator. There is a disconnect there. And because of that disconnect, we cannot have that peace that was originally intended for us. When we go back and we look at the story of Adam and Eve, everybody and everything was chilling in the Garden of Eden. There was no chaos. There was no vengeance. There was no distraction. There was no uh, uh, uh. Instead, there was only peace, love, abundance, kindness, mindfulness. And we've lost that due to sin but we can have it back how do we have it back by asking holy spirit to come and spend time with us if you've ever heard someone pray that prayer and they say lord send holy spirit touch and sit with me spend time with me open my ears so that i may hear you it is because that person wants you to have peace they want themselves to have peace, but they know that it is available and they are claiming it in that moment. Have you ever had a time where you didn't know what was going to happen and you prayed this prayer and all of a sudden you were like, well, that's that. And you felt better? I'll give you another example. Remember David. He laid prostrate on the ground. Lord, save my child. Lord, save my child. And when they came and said, your child has passed, your child is dead, what did David do? Got up, dusted himself off, and went about his day. Why? Because he had the peace that God had given to him. Because if anyone could have done anything, God could have done it. And if it was in his master's plan, if it was in God's plan for his child to live, his child would have lived. And he understood that though it didn't make sense to his earthly body, it didn't make sense to his father's heart, he understood that in his spirit, it would be okay. Because his spirit possessed the peace that he knew that God would give to him. 
We cannot underestimate the gifts that God gives to us. We cannot under, underestimate the purpose of each and every personality, if you will, that God possesses. He is God the Father, always protecting and watching out for us as a good father will. He is Jesus Christ, our Savior, always the shepherd looking for the sheep. He is Holy Spirit, the comforter and the almighty nurturer that keeps us going when we are walking through our own personal darkness. Allow God to move and work in your life. It matters not what you're going through, what you've been going through, or what, what you will go through. God is there with you and he is able to make a way out of no way. People don't just say that because it sounds good, because it's become cliche, but because people have walked the truth and they know that my God is an awesome God. You sing the song not because it's simply words, that it's simply lyrics in the book, but because your spirit can testify to how good your God is. Now, I can sit here and I can preach all day about the wonderful things that God has done in my life. I can tell you that he has pulled me up from places. I have experienced death. I have experienced illness. I have experienced simply living the life of anyone else here on earth. And God has made a way. I have prayed and some have been answered. I have prayed and some have not. And I have simply gotten up, dusted myself off, and believed that God will make a way, though I may not see. Amen? Amen. So I think right now would be a wonderful time to stop and pray for our pastors. Um, for many of you who are just joining in, we look at scripture. We look at what the word has to tell us about a certain topic, and then we pray for that certain topic for our pastors. Not just my pastors, but also for all of your pastors. If you know someone who is working in kingdom business, then I am praying for them. If you are the one working in kingdom business, then I am praying for you. I am praying for senior pastors, youth pastors, singles ministry, married ministry. I am praying for deacons, deaconess, elders, missionaries. I am praying for your church leaders. If you have someone that you would like for me to pray for, very specifically, please make sure that you put their first name up. We do not, for privacy's sake, we don't need their last names. God knows who you're talking about anyway. Amen? So let's go on and prepare our hearts and minds to pray for our kingdom workers. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with the heart of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for the gift of our life. We thank you for the gift of our Savior. Lord, we ask that you send down a fresh anointing. Lord, we ask that as each and every one of the people that are here in the churches and the ministries that they represent, Lord, that you will touch them and refresh them. Lord, that if they are the pastor, that you will anoint their heads with oil. That if they are standing in the gap for their pastors, that you will anoint those pastors. Lord, we pray for a fresh and divine anointing on every church, on every ministry. Lord, we pray that you will continue to work in a powerful way. That there will be evidence of your anointing in his or her personal life, as well as in their ministries and congregations. Lord, we know that if we simply ask that we too can have our jars filled with your oil. That if we ask and believe that we will have oil that overflows and there will be no expression of where it comes from other than the blessing of our God. Lord, we ask that as each and every one of us comes before you, that if there is something that that person has on their heart, Lord, that it is peace, it is understanding, that it is direction, that it is learning how to simply just be. In you we ask that you will give each and every person a fresh anointing Lord you know the heart of your children and we ask that you will hear our prayers we ask for this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen. I now ask that you turn to 
Deuteronomy. We're going Old Testament now, okay? So that's in the beginning books of your Bible. So we are turning now to Deuteronomy. And we are looking at the 11th chapter, verses 13 through 15. Deuteronomy 11, 13 through 15. And I like to call this the general scripture because perhaps you are not a kingdom worker. Perhaps you are not working in ministry. But I still want to be able to share a lesson, a message, a teaching with you because I believe that no matter what capacity we work in, we have all been given the directives to make disciples of the people, to inform them that the gospel is available for them, that God's love is available for them no matter where they are, uh, where they live or what stage of life they are in. So we are looking at Deuteronomy 11 verses 13 through 15 and I'm reading the New Living Translation. And it reads, If you carefully obey all the commands I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul, and if you worship him, then he will send the rains in their proper season so that you can harvest crops of grain, grapes for wine, and olives for oil. He will give you lush pasture land, you're welcome, for your cattle to graze in, and you yourselves will have plenty to eat. Let's read that again. If you carefully obey all the commands I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul, and if you worship him, then he will send the rains in their proper season so that you can harvest crops of grain, grapes for wine, and olives for oil. He will give you lush pasture land for your cattle to graze in, and you yourselves will have plenty. To eat. So we have a lot to look at there, but boy, is it good stuff. It is good stuff when you know. So let's look at it in the very beginning. If you carefully obey all of the commandments I am giving you today, I love the word carefully there because it means that you are paying attention to what you're doing. You are doing it purposefully. You're not doing it for us, for Christians. We are not doing it simply because it is the law. It was the law at this time, but we as modern Christians, we are choosing to do this carefully. We are choosing to do this on purpose, not simply because it is law, but because we want to be obedient to God. If you carefully obey all of the commandments I am giving you today, today, today is always a present word. If you read it yesterday, yesterday was your today. If you read this a year from now, guess what? Boo -boo! It's today. I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God with what? With all of your heart and your soul. So not just with your head, not just with your heart, but with all of your very being. And if you worship him, worship is personal. Worship is that private time with the Lord that you go before and you praise. You give, you, you have that heart of thanksgiving that I was just praying about. That you are so grateful for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and all that he will do. Then he will send the rains in their proper season. Uh-oh, proper season. You know I can't let you just slip past that without saying, well, what is proper season? Proper season, when we look at it, is the first rain and the latter rain. So when you're reading this, depending on the translation in which you are reading it, latter rain, first rain, and latter rain. It could be spring, it could be autumn, just depending on the version that you're reading. So the first rain, and here's where people get a little bit confused, because come on, I really want you to follow me on this, right? The first rain is September to October. It is not springtime. Huh? Yes, check this out. First rain is September and October. This is after the sowing. This is when God makes the soil ripe. 
This is when God loosens the soil with the moisture, bring the rain, make me moist, make me supple, make me malleable, make me pliable, make me able to receive the seed. Make me able to receive the seed. Send the first rain, plant. The latter rain. The latter rain is in March and April. Why? Because you need to go again and tend to what you planted the first time. So during the winter time, and those of you who actually have seasons, we don't have seasons that much in California. I know somebody's saying, but Dr. Angela, you don't have seasons. Ah, we do. Okay, so if you live in one of those places where you especially experience the four seasons, right, you plant certain things in the fall so that they will go all winter germinating, right? So come spring, you will have flowers, you will have crops, you will have those things that are going to feed you for that particular season. You also have the latter rain, which is March, April, May. Why is that important? Because you have been harvesting all spring. You are starting to pull up the things that were planted in the fall. But you also need to plant some stuff in the spring so that they will spring up in the fall before the winter comes. Come on, Jesus. You're going to give me rain twice. You're going to give me the before and the after. You're going to give me the first and the latter. You're going to give me the springtime and you're going to give me the fall. Come on. It's not about you and your own understanding. It's about God having a plan and already knowing what you need to make sure that your life happens the way that it is supposed to happen. So when we go on and we talk about what are you giving me, Jesus? What are you giving me in this particular scripture? He goes on and says, I will give you harvest crops of grain, grapes for wine, and olives for oil. So let's look at that. Corn and wheat. Corn and wheat means that you will have substance. You will be able to eat. Your body will be able to continue. He is going to give us wine. Wine is to drink and to celebrate so that you can celebrate those things that are happening throughout the year, but you will also have libation. He is giving us oil. What is the significance of the oil? The oil is for flavor both for your food and for your spirit. Amen? So I am going to give you oil so that you will have richness, so you will have taste to your food, but I'm also going to give you the oil, the olive oil, so that you can anoint yourself when it is time to pray. I am going to give you oil so that you can anoint your deceased and be able to take care of them. Be it that they are in the first rain or the latter rain, I will give you the things that you need. So when we look at the harvest and we look at the plant time, now come on, I, I, and I hope that you're following along, because when I read this, I got so excited and I said, Jesus, you are taking care of me and my family no matter what season it is, no matter what time of the year, you are providing for me, you are giving to me and I am able to eat and live and know that I will be well. When we look at wheat, wheat has a summer wheat, I'm sorry, a winter wheat, and a spring wheat. So what are the time frames? Winter wheat you harvest from May until July. Spring wheat you harvest in August and September. Why do I give you the, the time? Because in winter, you would think that you're supposed to pick that up in the winter time. No, the, you plant it opposite of the time that you harvest. So your winter wheat you will harvest in May and July. Your spring wheat you get from August to September. Well, when do I get my wine, Lord? You pick your wine, your grapes or your wine, in July and in October. In July and in October. Well, when do I get my olives? Between September and November. You will have all year round because we know that with wine and with olives it takes time for it to process we know that it needs to be pressed we know that it has to do its little fermentation thing that it has to do what it needs to do and see with olives you have olives that are for your table that's your food and then you have your olive oil that is for anointing so you have different times of the year in which you will harvest your olives to do according to its purpose according to what God has purposed it for. Amen? So when we look at this, no matter what time of year it 
is, no matter what time in the in the season that it is, God is providing for us. So when we go on and we look at towards the end of this scripture, he also says he will give you lush pasture land for your cattle to graze. Cattle are important because you use them to plow your land. You use them as for travel. You could use them like you would put uh, your, 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 um, your satchels, your bags on them. So don't just think of uh, cows, but cattle in all sense of the word. You can have mules, you can have horses, you can have camels, depending on where you are. And that word, it is all. We, you will have your beasts of burden, right? But you will also have food to eat should you need it, right? So your cattle includes those things where it's go and slaughter that lamb because my son has come home. You will have green, lush grass for your animals to graze in. And you yourselves will have plenty to eat. Just in case you were wondering or you were worried, and you yourselves will have plenty to eat. There's somebody right now wondering. They're worrying about, where am I going to get my next meal from? What am I going to do in order to feed my children? How do I make that happen? Go back to verse 13. If you carefully obey all of the commands I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, and if you worship him, then he will send you the rains in the proper season so that you can harvest your crops of grain, your grapes for wine, and your oils, your olives for oil. He will give you lush pastures, and you yourself will have plenty to eat. Ask for the fresh anointing. Ask for Holy Spirit to come. Take Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Cry out, Father God, I need to hit the reset button. I can't do it all by myself. And I need your peace. I need a fresh anointing. And I believe that if anyone can do it, it is you, Father God, that can do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, I would like to pray for our sick and our shut-in. If you have someone that, that you would like for me to pray for, please, by all means, Go on and, and put their first names up. Go, uh, if you want to, you know, say what city they're in, that's fine. But we don't need to have their last names because, again, the Lord knows exactly who we are praying for. If you have not taken the opportunity to share this out, please be sure to share this with your, your followers, your tribe, your community. Because we all need a fresh anointing. It doesn't matter if they're watching this live or they're watching this on another platform, perhaps even at another time. A fresh anointing is available to each and every one of us whenever we ask. It is that happenstance that you have come and you have visited with me today. It is because God wants you to know that he is there for you. He always has been and he always will be. If we will simply stop for a moment and not look towards ourselves, but instead look to him for the peace that we need. So let's go on and lift up those that are sick and shut in. Sometimes people are simply elderly and they're not able to get out as often as they would like to, so they may be a little shut in. We are also praying for those that are sick that may be able to come home in a few days. We want to pray for them. Or you may have someone who, you know, I'm not sure, Dr. Angel, if they're ever going to come home. Boy, do we serve an awesome and mighty God. Mm -hmm. So we do not need to put an expiration date on anyone. We simply leave it in the master's hands. Amen. So we're going to lift up each and every one of those people. And again, if there's someone that you want to lift up, please be sure to simply state your name. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift before you our brothers and sisters in Christ. We lift before you your children that need your healing touch. Lord, we ask that you will heal them. We ask that you will give them total and complete healing, that you will touch their minds as well as their bodies. Lord, we ask that those that are perhaps are more aged and it is simply getting close to the time where they will be able to come home with you. Lord, we still ask that you will ease their joints, 
that you will let them know that they still have an opportunity to share their wisdom with those that need it. Lord, your word says that it will be the elder women that will share with the younger women about how to be a great wife and a great mother. Lord, your word says that you will give visions both from seniors and to our young men, that they will be our warriors. Lord, we ask that in that time that our young people will sit and listen to the wisdom of their elders, that they will take that warrior spirit that you have given to them and they will go out and do what you would have them do, that each and every one of your children serves a purpose in your plan. Lord, we lift before you Francis and Carla. Lord, we lift Azalea and Roycey. We lift Dolores and Betty, Winston and Sandra. Lord, we lift up before you Joseph and Janine. Lord, we lift up Jenny and Kim, Mary and Jim. Lord, we lift Mildred and Catherine. We lift up Sandra and Alfonso. Lord, we lift May and Helen. We lift Bertha and Ethel. Lord, we ask that you look down on Michael and Beverly, that you will see William and Lois, that you will touch Anna and Patricia, Richard and Margaret. Lord, that you see Lucinda and Richard. And Lord, we ask that you will send Holy Spirit to those we may not know their names, but are be lifted before you right now. Lord, you know what each and every one of them needs. Lord, we ask that as the person that is praying on their behalf, that you will give them a touch and they will understand that it is directly from you. Lord, though our brothers and sisters may not be with us physically, let them know that we are praying for them, that we miss them, and that they may not be before our eyes, but that they are in our hearts. Lord, we ask that you touch each and every family that perhaps has lost a loved one over the past week. Will you send them your peace and your comfort? May you remind them that their loved one is with you, and that they are having a ball, dancing, singing, and praising before their Lord. Lord, we ask that you continue to guide us and lead us. We ask that as we travel, that your angels will go before us. We ask that as we touch and agree with our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we will remember that peace and love trumps hate, that it is your life that should fall across our nations. It is your love that should lead and guide each and every one of our homes. We ask for your healing, your love, and your guidance. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope, Lord willing, that I will see you back next week. If you think that you have found this by happenstance, you have not, please take this opportunity to press those little dots down there and make sure that you follow me. I am on every Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern time. That is 9 a.m. on the West Coast. And I believe it's 1 a.m. if you're in Dublin. Thank you so much for visiting with me today. And may the grace and the peace and the love of our Father God always be with you. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.